Shabbat Shalom. It's, uh, it's that time again. We've got a pretty good study set up uh, for this Shabbat. And this week's uh, Torah portions are very important portions for us to understand. Because this is where Yahweh sets forth a, a pattern for us to follow, which most of mankind, for some reason, has forgotten all about this pattern. I would like to take the opportunity to to really thank uh, Rico Cortez and Brad Scott for all that they've done uh, to help this this ministry. Um, hallelujah! Uh, very good brothers and and willing to help at all times. And and uh, I just want to thank them because without them, uh, none of this would be possible. And and I'm very thankful. The Torah portions for this week. Are Exodus 25 1 through 27 19, 1 Kings chapter 5 26 through 6 13, and Matthew chapter 13 1 through 53. Hallelujah. Let us uh, begin in prayer. Say the Shema. Hallelujah. Father Yahweh, we come to you, your children, seeking your guidance. And we say Shabbat Shalom, Father. We thank you for this day of rest. We thank you for your Torah. We thank you for your commandments. We thank you for the blood that was shed, most of all, Father. We ask that your Ruach would be present with us tonight and that you would lead us and guide us in this study and that you would help us make the connections, Father. Uh, in your word that shows us how to follow this pattern that is spoken of in, in the Torah portions uh, this week, Father. Bless us with your presence as we study your word. Hallelujah. Blessed be your great name. Forgive us of our sins in the name of Yahshua. Lead us and guide us, Father. We thank you so much for the mercy and the favor that you have shown us. And we thank you so much for showing uh, us a way home to you. Hallelujah. We pray and ask all of this, Father, in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach. Amen. Shema Yisrael Yahweh Eloheinu Yahweh Echad Baruch Shem Kavot Malkutu Le'olam Bayed. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh our Elohim, Yahweh is one. And blessed be his esteemed name forever. Hallelujah. Okay. So, let's get to it. Okay, we're going we're gonna to start off in Exodus, or Shemot, chapter 25. And we're going to begin reading verses 1 through 9. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Israel 
that they take up a contribution for me from everyone whose heart moves him, you shall take up my contribution. Now, let's, let's continue on. We'll come back to that. And this is the contribution which you take up from them, gold and silver and bronze and blue and purple and scarlet material and fine linen and goat's hair and ram skins dyed red. We'll be also be going over that. And fine leather and acacia wood, oil for the light, representing the spirit, hallelujah, that always burns within us, hallelujah. Spices for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense, shoham stones and stones to be set in the shoulder garment and in the breastplate. And they shall make me a set-apart place, and I shall dwell in their midst. According to all that I show you, the pattern of the dwelling place, and the pattern of all of its furnishings, make it exactly so. This is what we are going to study this evening from the Torah. Notice here it says in verse 9, according to all that I show you, the pattern. So there is a pattern given to the followers of Yahweh through the mediator, hallelujah, Moses and the Israelites, which is a shadow of Yahshua being a mediator for us to stand in the presence of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Now notice he says, and the pattern of all of its furnishings. Make it exactly so. So here, this is what we're going to study tonight. This is what this is what I present to you. This pattern was a pattern that was supposed to last throughout all generations. Hallelujah. And it's also connected to the promises of Abraham. It's deeply connected to the death, burial, and resurrection of Yahshua and him being at the right hand of the Father to stand uh, as a mediator between uh, Yahweh's people and himself. According to all that I show you, the pattern of the dwelling place. So this means the place where he dwells is supposed to be made. There's a pattern that we use. Hallelujah. Okay, for this dwelling place. Now, just to set everything in order and nobody, so everybody can understand, when they roamed around out in the desert or out in the wilderness, okay, they in these scriptures were given a pattern on how to build the tabernacle, how to build the tent. Okay? And I'm saying that this pattern was actually the pattern that we were supposed to receive when we repent. Because this tent becomes cleansed, okay? And we get rid of everything that was in there. We cleanse this temple, and then we must place something in it. There's a pattern given us in order that we can use it, that Yahweh's presence will dwell in us. Hallelujah. Okay? Now, let's go back up here to uh, verses 1 and 2. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, that they take up a contribution for me from everyone whose heart moves him. See, it's always been a thing of the heart. Okay, this, this isn't something that has changed since the Messiah came. Everything that Yahweh has ever put before his people had to do with their heart. Hallelujah. Okay. You shall take up my contribution. These are offerings. These are teruma, which is the Hebrew word, and, and it's also the word that is given in the title of our Torah portions for the week. Toruma. It means to offer, to give from a clean heart, from a pure heart. Something that you give from your heart. So we see that Yahweh is giving a pattern here. Okay? And it's got to do with our heart. Things that move us into doing things that show him that we love him. And from a messianic perspective, he gave us his son. The most important thing that we have to place in our tent, hallelujah, in order for his presence to be there. Now, the uh, let's go down. 
let's let's go over uh, first. Let's make let's make a a, a connection here to uh, the writings of Shaul. Now remember, Shaul was laced with the word. He knew the Torah by heart. Okay, so whenever we try to figure out the things that he was saying to these assemblies in his letters, if you do not, once again, I say this a lot, if you do not understand Torah precepts and concepts in your New Testament theology, okay, you are going to make a total ball of confusion out of your teachings when you present it to whatever assembly you're presenting it to. We tonight are going to follow this pattern that was given at the Mount all throughout time and right into the Brit Hadashah, the New Testament. Okay? It was never supposed to change. Yahweh does not change, and the things that he gave us to live by will not, nor will they ever, change. See, the way that modern theology is placing things and teaching us, okay, through the theology courses and uh, seminary schools and everything like that, it, it's making Yahweh, making it look like Yahweh is a liar. That he didn't do what he said he was going to do to all generations, to all mankind. Okay? We must line out, our teachings must line up with this pattern. Okay? If whoever is teaching you that you can be saved any other way, other than by following this pattern that we're going to see has been handed down to every generation of man all the way down to the first century, okay, I would have to question that man's authority or who he is sent by. Because Yahweh's messengers keep this pattern. This is the pattern. Hallelujah. Now, just, just, just to, just to show, uh, just to give us a little taste of that being true. Notice here it says in verse two, "Whose heart moves in him, you shall take up my contribution." This is the offering. Okay, this is the teruma, the offering from the heart. Hallelujah. Let's see teruma in the New Testament coming from Shaul. All right. Let us turn to Second Corinthians chapter nine. And let us read verses 6 through 8. Now remember what the Torah just, just told us to do. Okay? The Torah says that we, th this is a pattern, that he's giving us a pattern here. Okay? And in the rest of, of, the, of the Torah portions for uh, this week, we see that there were certain ways that they made all of the, the rings. There were 50 of those rings. And 50 is a very significant number. There's many Torah teachers out there that teach, uh, 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 most of them are teaching on, uh, the things like uh, the goat's hair, um, the colors blue and purple, and the rings. And, and I, I, I don't really want to touch on the same basis as everybody else. So I'm going to teach from a different perspective concerning these Torah portions. Okay? Because those teachings are all over the, the web. However, I'm trying to keep it uh, something fresh, something new uh, to most of you. And, and, and make some uh, very significant connections. Okay? to what was being written by the apostles in the first century so that we can see that this pattern never changed. Now remember the Torah says whose heart moves in him. Okay? Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 8. And this, he who sows sparingly shall also reap sparingly, and he who sows on blessings shall also reap on blessings. Let and these these are fruits of being obedient to the Father's commandments, by the way. Okay? Now watch. Verse 7. Let each one give as he proposes in his heart. Hallelujah. This Torah observant man is teaching us Torah principles in his writings. Okay? Has not changed. Let each one give as he proposes in his heart, and let, oh, excuse me, in his heart, not of grief 
or of necessity. See, Yahweh wants to see what you want, what you are willing to give from your heart. And we're going, as we move into the rest of the uh, the teachings uh, for this week, we're going to see the significance of this. Watch. For Elohim loves a joyous giver. See, it's got to do with your heart and being a joyful giver. The same thing that he was doing with the children of Israel in these Torah portions. And Elohim is able to make all favor overflow towards you, that you, always having all you need in every way, have plenty for every good work. Notice what he will supply you with. The things that you need to continue in good works. You understand? The works of his kingdom. Courage, strength, power, health. Things that the Torah says that you will have if you are obedient to it. Hallelujah. So here we see that Shaul is teaching the same exact principles, okay, in the first century in his writings to the church, uh, to the assembly in Corinth. Okay, now let's take a look. Now let's take a look at... Uh, Verses 21 and 22. Okay. So, in the in the portions that we read first, in verse 9 it says, According to all that I show you. Now remember, Yahweh is showing us things in his word. The word is Yahshua. The word saves. The word was made manifest. So, do you understand the concept here? Okay. In his word, in his word, in Messiah. Okay. In Yahshua. Listen to this. According to all that I show you, show you where? In my word. According to all that I show you, the pattern of the dwelling place. Now remember, Shaul also wrote that we are the dwelling place, the temple of the Most High. So what we're going to do is we're going to see the pattern that was used and the utensils and everything that was to be moved into this tent of meeting. Now, remember, Shaul also said that he would put off this tent. Okay? we This is a, a temporary dwelling place, a tent that we... Now, we must prepare our tent for the indwelling of Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit of Yahweh. Okay? This is why he gave us these principles. So that we would know what pattern to use what to move into our temple when we truly repent and receive Yahshua HaMashiach, the true Messiah. So let's follow this pattern. Okay. Verse 21 and 22. And you shall put the lid of atonement on top of the ark and put into the ark the witness, which is the, the testimony, the, the tablets, okay, which I give you. And I shall meet with you there. And from above the lid of atonement, from between the two cherubim, which are on the ark of the witness, I shall speak to you all that which I command, all that which I command you concerning the children of Israel. And I shall meet with you there. This place is in the holy place, the holy of holies, the set-apart place where Yahweh dwells above his mercy seat. Now, if you and I were to try to approach this place without the proper utensils, without the testimony before us, okay, and without Yahshua being there to mediate between us, what would we get if we approach Yahweh without that, okay, our just reward. Just exactly what we would have coming. If we try to approach this place um, without the priest being present, okay, that's that's the rule of thumb. And we're going to get, this is these. I'm bringing these things up because when we as we move into the Brit Hadashah, we're going to see the exact same pattern, the exact same testimony. Being used. 
And what I'm trying to say is, anybody who is, who's telling you that you can enter the kingdom reign without using this, this, this pattern, okay, is deceiving you. And there is no way that he could be leading you into the promises for keeping this pattern. Hallelujah. And I shall meet with you there. This place that we are preparing within our tent, this temple, this dwelling place, where the, where the spirit of Almighty Yahweh dwells within you, there, there is something that you must do in order to prepare this place, to dedicate it to him and only him, in order for him to dwell there. Then, and only then, are we able to fill the true mighty one of Israel dwelling within us and receive the joy and the peace of his promises. All right. So, here we see Moses receiving the pattern at the mount. Okay? And they built this tent of meeting in the wilderness. Okay? You and I are in the wilderness. Okay? We have... Uh, we are now seeking the shepherd. We are no longer lost. But what we have to do now is prepare a, a dwelling place in this tent for Almighty Yahweh. Okay? And we use this pattern to do it. Okay? Now watch. We're going to go to the dedication of Solomon's temple. Let's go to Second Chronicles chapter 5. All right? This is very revealing. Now, what we're going to see here is testimony that when this pattern was given at the mount, we're going to go into the days of Solomon, okay? And we're going to see that pattern still being used and what it produced. Because we need it to produce the same exact thing. That is what we are all seeking, is that the presence of Almighty Yahweh will dwell in our tabernacle, in our tent. This is the dwelling place of the Most High. And... This is where he will meet with us in our inner man that we have sanctified for him to be there. We must build it like he said to build it. Hallelujah. And he will be there. He will meet with us in there. The love of Almighty Yahweh, we can meet with him in our inner self, our inner man. Hallelujah. This is what we're trying to do. Cleanse the inner man. This is the purpose of the Torah. It gives life. You can read this in Shaul's writings in the book of Romans. The Torah kills the flesh. It kills the outer man. But it gives life to the inner man. So that inner man is that dwelling place where we meet with Yahweh. This is where he wants to meet with us at. Okay? Because if we follow the Torah, the Torah, the letter will kill. The letter, the Torah itself will kill the flesh. We need to understand that the Torah kills the flesh. And we must condemn sin in the flesh in order to go into the kingdom. Because sin cannot enter the kingdom. And if you have unrepented sin in your life, you're not ready for the kingdom reign. We must condemn sin in the flesh. And that's the purpose of there being two or more resurrections. That's a whole other study. Hallelujah. All right. So, we're going to use 2 Chronicles. We're going to follow this pattern. Second Chronicles, chapter 5. Now, this is taking place. Let me set the stage. Solomon has built the temple. It's been uh, prepared. The priests, everybody are there. He calls the children of Israel together, and they are going to dedicate the temple to Yahweh. Okay? Now, the son built this dwelling place, which is symbolic. Okay? The son well, not King David, but his son. The son builds the house. 
Hallelujah. Okay. Which Bereshit. Okay. The first book in the Hebrew Bible. Okay. Bereshit. Starts with the letter Bet. And ends with the letter Tav. And in that we see that the letter Bet represents a house. Okay. And the letter Tav represents a cross or stake. And that's what Yahweh was showing us. That his house would be built on the stake, on the cross. You understand this? That's, and here's another beautiful picture of that. The son would build the house, the dwelling place. Hallelujah. That's who we put in our heart. Hallelujah. We must have Yahshua in this place. He must build it. And the father will dwell there. Hallelujah. Because he was sinless. That's why I say we must condemn sin in the flesh. You guys know that teaching? I'm sure most of you that are familiar with the New Testament teachings, this is what it's talking about. Hallelujah. Okay. Second Chronicles, chapter 5, we're going to be reading first, um, verses 1 through 10. Hallelujah. And all the work that Solomon, mine says Shalomah, by the way. I'm reading out of the scripture, so uh, any of you that are new, to the site or, or uh, to, to the video teachings, uh, you're going to see some different words. But I don't care what you're reading out of. The word of Yahweh, if you're not reading out of a sacred name Bible, please get it. Okay, Even, it doesn't matter what it is. Okay, read along with us. Have your notepad out and study this stuff with us. And all of the work that uh, Shalom had done for the house of Yahweh, see, the son, King David's son, had done the work for the house of who? Yahweh. The son built the house of Yahweh. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see this? Now, the son, Yahshua, must build the house, the dwelling place of who? Yahweh. You're going to see throughout this, wherever, if you are reading a King James or New King James or other English versions like it, you're going to be seeing L-O-R-D there. Now, if you look that word up in the Strong's, it'll be number 3068, okay, uh, for the ma majority of time. Sometimes it'll lead you to Adonai, but Adonai was actually replaced by the Mes Mesorite scribes, and that's a historical fact. And, it, they, and they used Adonai to replace uh, the Tetragrammaton for whatever reason. They shouldn't have done it, but they did. Anyway. The majority of the time, wherever you see L-O-R-D, this is where Yahweh's name was. So watch the significance, even if you're using the King James Bible. Watch the significance here. Here we see that uh, Solomon, the son of David, built the house of Yahweh. And all the work that Solomon had done for the house of Yahweh was completed. And Solomon brought... Now, th okay, this and this is like this is what I'm presenting. Okay, let's let's use this as as a picture of us as we repent. You see, now we've done everything. Hallelujah. Uh, everything that Solomon had done for the house of Yahweh was completed, and Solomon brought in the set apart items of his father David. See what he begins to move in the house that he had prepared. Everything that had been ordained by his father. <laughs> All of the utensils. And watch it. There's something else that's very significant to this. This is what happens when we... Remember, uh, Paul said this is a tent. Okay? Now remember what they, what they, what they uh, had as they wandered out in uh, the wilderness. Okay? Was the tent of meeting. Which is what our Torah portions were talking about when we, be, when we began the study tonight. Okay? Now that was a tent. Correct? Now watch what happens. Now we've got a permanent dwelling place, another dwelling place that was prepared by the sun. Okay? Watch. Uh, and Solomon brought in the set-apart items of his father David. So everything that his father had, had uh, made holy, he began to move into the new temple. Okay? The silver and the gold and all the utensils. All the utensils, everything that, that was ordained by Yahweh to be in the last temple, hallelujah, is going into this new one. 
and he put them in the treasuries of the house of Elohim. And Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the chief fathers and the children of Israel in Jerusalem to bring up the ark. See what else we're going to put inside of this? Now he's following the pattern. These are the things that were put in the original tent. Okay? Now I'm going to present something to you. I'm saying this is a picture of what was lost in the Garden of Eden as well. See, in the original tent, the original body of Adam, Adam, okay, there was no sin. Everything that had been ordained by Yahweh and created by Yahweh and the way he wanted man to be was in that body, in that tent. You see this? But, Hasatan, the adversary, led them into uh, temptation and sin, and so it trapped the life that Yahweh had given us in death. The mortal body began to die, and it was it was holding us in 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 uh it was holding us in bondage, killed us. So Yahweh is giving us a pattern to use in order. That if we use it correctly and, and we rebuild our temple, if we present this tent, hallelujah, to him and use the utensils and everything else that he said to use and to place in our temple, in his temple, in his dwelling place, then he will relight our candle. There's a fire that's been put out inside of us. King David talked about this and we're going to go over that as well. So in uh, back in verse two, uh, the fathers of the children of Israel in in Jerusalem to bring up the ark of the covenant of Yahweh from the city of David, which is in Zion. And all the men of Israel assembled to the sovereign at the festival, which was in the seventh month. The festival in the seventh month. Guess what this would be? Tabernacles. So what we're about to see took place. On the Feast of Tabernacles in the seventh month, seventh month. Okay? Now, when was Yahshua really born? This is showing us. Okay, this is this is this is also running right in during the, the Feast of Booths, Tabernacles. He tabernacled among us. Okay? This is why he this is why we must understand the Torah. Okay? Yahshua tabernacled among us. Okay? During the Feast of Tabernacles. Yahweh is showing us a pattern here. Now, so we see that he brought all of the utensils that was ordained by his father, okay, and and the Ark of the Covenant is being brought up. We're moving all of this stuff into this temple that we are dedicating to Yahweh. This is what we do when we repent, people. We follow this pattern. We cleanse our temple. Okay, we get ourselves ritually clean. Hallelujah. And then we begin to move everything that the Father has ordained into our temple. Why? So that we can meet with him here. They bring up the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh from the city of David, which is in Sion. And all the men of Israel assembled to the sovereign at the festival, which in, is in the seventh month. And all the elders of Israel came, and the Levites took up the ark. And they brought up the ark of the tent of meeting, and all the set-apart utensils that were in the tent, the Levites brought them up. And the sovereign uh, Solomon and all the congregation of Israel who were assembled to him before the ark were slaughtering so many sheep and cattle that could not be counted or numbered. Now notice what's going on here. They're moving the Ark of the Covenant. They also moved the tent itself. Okay? Now, we just read back here that they covered the holy place. They covered the tent with ram skins. Okay? The definition, if you look up in, the, in a Webster dic Dictionary of ram skin, it means a male sheep. So, what, what this is showing, and it was dyed red. And most theologians, and, and I myself believe, that, and most scholars believe, that they dyed these lambskins in blood, red. 
That's what was covering the tent of meeting. This being symbolic, saying that the children of Israel were always covered in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. So here we see that they moved all of the utensils and the Ark of the Covenant into this temple that they were dedicating to Yahweh during the Feast of Tabernacles. Okay? And then we see sacrifice. This is the good news. This is exactly how, this is the biblical way that we are supposed to repent and cleanse our temple and dedicate it to the Father. Uh, they were slaughtering so many sheep and cattle that could not be counted or numbered. And the priests brought in the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh to its place and to the speaking place of the house of the most set-apart place under the wings of the cherubim. For the cherubim spread their wings over the place of the ark, and the cherubim covered the over the ark and its poles. And the poles were so long that the ends of the poles of the ark were, were seen from the set-apart place, in front of the speaking place, but they were not seen from outside. And they are there to this day. Verse 10. There was not in the ark but the two tablets, which Mose put there at Horeb when Yahweh made the covenant with the children of Israel when they came out of Mithraim. You see this? They moved everything that was shown to them on the pattern or from the pattern on the mount into this new temple. This is exactly what we are supposed to do when we present this temple to Yahweh. We move everything that was ordained by the Father and what was in the Ark of the Covenant, the commandments. This is true repentance. This is how you invite Yahshua into your heart. He is the high priest and the priests move all of these things into the holy place where you will meet with Yahweh. You see this pattern? They're using the same exact pattern that Moses was shown on the mount uh, verse 10 just told us. There is no other pattern. There is no other way to repent. There is no other way to dedicate your temple, my temple, or anybody else's temple other than the pattern that was set forth by Yahweh himself. We must understand these precepts in order to properly prepare ourselves for Yahweh's kingdom, for his dwelling in us. Hallelujah. So, it says that, that they also moved in the tent of meeting went in here. Now, the tent of meeting had all of the lambskins uh, sewn together and, and, and dyed in red. This is symbolic of Yahshua. Okay, he was the lamb that gave the blood, that covered the children and, and cleansed them of their sins. That tent represents Yahshua. Yahshua was moved in to this temple. Yahshua, okay, came in to this temple with the commandments, the testimonies, and all of the utensils that was ordained by the Father. We move Yahshua into our hearts, into this temple, into the holy place, with all of the commandments, everything that was in the Ark of the Covenant, the commandments. And this is what, re, what result we will get. The same result that Solomon got on this day. Now see, he followed the pattern. He moved everything in there that only the Father had ordained. He also moved in the tent of meeting itself, which is which represents the body of Yahshua. The lamb skins dyed red. Represent the covering of Yahshua. Okay? So we move Yahshua into our tent, into our tabernacle. Okay? Along with everything that was ordained by the Father. This is true repentance. This is the good news. This is the pattern that we use. Now let's look at the result that they get 
by following this pattern. You know, first let's cover let's cover a few a few other verses before we look at the result that they receive. Okay? Let's look at verses um 9 through 14 before we move on to see uh the result that all of this produces. All right? Watch what this is connected to. Okay? But you do not build the house for your son who comes forth from your loins. He does build the house for what? For my name. What is the name of the Father? The true name. We've already been over this the uh, uh, last week. Okay, we, we did uh, some etymology and some word study. And so what name are they talking about here? It's the name of Yahweh. Now watch. The son built the house in this verse. The son who comes forth from your loins. Okay. Yahshua came forth from who? The father. Hallelujah. He does build a house for what? Yahweh says, my name. The true son, Yahshua, builds the house, Yahweh's house, for what? For Yahweh's name. Not the name of G-O-D, L-O-R-D, J-E-S-U-S, -S, none of those things. For the name of Yahweh in the Hebrew, that is what we see. Verse 10. Now Yahweh has established his word which he spoke. Yahweh always establishes things by his spoken word. His spoken word was recorded for us by Moshe and handed down to us over the generations by his people. Okay? He will always bring to pass that which he has said he would bring to pass. And he said this is the pattern. This is the way we're going to bring things to pass. By you following this pattern. Hallelujah. Now Yahweh has established his word which he spoke. And I have been raised up instead of my father David. And sit on the throne of Yisrael. As Yahweh had promised. And I have built the house for the name of Yahweh. Elohim of Israel. This is who we are supposed to build this house for. And this is the name that we are supposed to use in doing so. The house that Yahshua builds is for his father. And his father's name is Yahweh. Let's also look at um, verse 32 and 33. All right. Because there's many teachers out there that say that all of this stuff was for the Israelites, the Hebrews, the Jews. Really doesn't pertain to us uh, if you believe in the Messiah, the Savior. It's different now. That's what they say. But let's watch the words of uh, Solomon here. Okay? Remember, he's speaking a prayer at this dedication. Okay? As a matter of fact, let's keep going a little bit right here. Verse 11. And there I have placed the ark in which is the covenant of Yahweh, which he made with the children of Israel. You can see that in Hebrews 8, verse 10 as well. You'll see the continuance of this pattern being used. Okay? And he stood before the altar in front of the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands. So here we have a king. Okay? The king of Israel. Watch what he does. He spread out his hands, praying. Blessed be your name, O king. Hallelujah. Accept this house that we have built for the, in honor of your great name. The name in which we are in covenant with. The name that has produced our deliverance. He raises his hands in front of all Israel. And then he does something that you would never see a king do. Unless he was in submission. Or had been defeated by someone else. Watch this. 
for Sholomon had made a bronze platform five cubits long and five cubits broad and three cubits high and had put it in the midst of the court and he stood on it. So he stood up on a platter, uh, excuse me, he stood up on a platform in front of all the elders, all of the priests, all of the children of Israel that were present. And look what he does. And he stood on it and knelt down on his knees before all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands towards the heaven. You see this? This king got on his knees and lifted his hands towards the heaven. And this is showing the people of Israel that they were not in submission. To, he was not into submission to anybody but Yahweh. He knelt down on his knees and raised his hands and said, I am in submission to you, Yahweh. A king done that. In the days when you would never see a king on his knees unless he had been defeated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now let's go to the result. Now remember, this is a prayer, okay, and they've moved everything that was ordained by the Father, including the tent itself, into this new dwelling place that they had prepared, okay? And then he began to sacrifice, okay? Before, hallelujah, now here's another thing that, that we need to understand. You notice he was sacrificing animals with, without number before this happened. Okay? So there was a sacrifice going on before. There was a sacrifice going on before the, the temple was inhabited by Yahweh. Okay? And then there's a sacrifice that goes on after Yahweh fills this place. Huh? There's going to be some sacrifices going on in our future. Remember that. Okay. Chapter 7. We'll read uh, verses 1 through 5. Now remember, I also said earlier uh, in, in the study that um, there was something inside of us, a, a fire, a, a light inside of us that Yahweh had put in Adam that was quenched. It was put out. There was some, that's why we live in darkness, the word says. Because that fire inside of us had, had been... Uh, had been put out. Okay? This is the reason why he gave us all of these things, this pattern, so that that candle could be relit. The only thing that can relight that candle is the spirit of Yahshua, because the spirit represents oil, the oil burns in the, men the menorah, and the menorah shines on the Torah in the tent of meeting. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's the way that works. You see the pattern here? Uh, chapter 7, beginning at verse 1, and we'll read 1 through 5. And when Solomon had ended praying, so when he, when, when all of the dedication was over and his prayer was over, and they moved everything into the temple that was supposed to be moved into the temple according to the word of Yahweh. And that's what I'm trying to get you guys to understand. We must move the Ark of the Covenant into our tabernacle, into our tent into our temple, okay? We must move the old tent, that tent, okay, which represented Yahshua, into our temple. This is the heart of man. This is the secret place where we go to meet him. And unless we have prepared that place the way he said to prepare it, he will, cannot dwell there. <coughs> I say this because his word says that he would dwell in this place if it met these certain, if we meet these standards that he told us to meet. When we invite him into our temple, then he will dwell there. And this is the same reaction that he gets here, Solomon gets here when they dedicated this temple. This is what we're trying to get. The same presence, the same reaction 
and it can only come by using this pattern. And when Solomon had ended praying, fire came down. Yahweh is an all-consuming fire. We get that in the Brit Hadashah, the New Testament. Fire came down from the Shemaim, from the heavens, and consumed the burnt offering and the slaughterings, and the esteem of Yahweh filled the house. And the priests were unable to enter the house of Yahweh because of the esteem of Yahweh had filled the house of Yahweh. And all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the esteem of Yahweh on the house, and they bowed their faces to the ground on the pavement and did obedience. Okay, they were being obedient. Okay, they fell on their faces here. And gave thanks unto Yahweh. Saying, for he is good, for his kindness is everlasting. Verse 5, verse 4. And the sovereign and all the people were making offerings before Yahweh. And the sovereign, Solomon, made an offering of 22,000 bulls. See, they begin to sacrifice again. There was a sacrifice to be made before Yahweh. Okay, we must sacrifice many things, people, in order to get the presence of Yahweh in our tent. This is the sacrifice spoken of here before the infilling. Okay, but then there's going to have to be continued sacrifices made once he does, once we do move in his commandments, the Ark of the Covenant, so that he can sit on the mercy seat and show us that he has uh, accepted the death of Yahshua and, passed ju and, and judgment will not be passed on us. That's why it's the mercy seat is there over the cherubim. Okay? Yahshua standing in, in, as a mediator between us in the holy place as a high priest presenting the blood that brings peace between us and Yahweh. The enmity that was between us is no longer there. Hallelujah. If you follow this pattern. So there's going to be continued, continued sacrifices needed in order after the indwelling of Yahweh's Spirit. In other words, you can't begin to let them old things that you sacrificed back in. You must continually, every day, sacrifice. Okay? Crucify your flesh daily. Never let those things back into your temple. That is what keeps the, the, the spirit of Yahweh within your temple. Daily sacrifices that we make for, for him, for, for his uh, presence. Hallelujah. Offering of 22,000 bulls and 120,000 sheep. Thus the sovereign and all the people dedicated the house of Elohim. Now let's go back over into 6. And remember I was saying to all these people that, that say that, uh, you know, we don't have to follow that pattern because, you know, now we live by faith and grace in, in the New Testament. Okay? No. That's not what this pattern shows. In this pattern, the foreigners are spoken about and included in the pattern. Okay? So the same pattern that was given to the Israelites it's the same pattern for the sojourners and foreigners that would believe on Yahweh Almighty. Okay? Let's look at verses uh, 32 and 33 in chapter 6. Also concerning a foreigner who is not of your people Israel, but who comes from a far land for the sake of your what great name, those who would believe on Yahweh, Okay, and your strong hand and your outstretched arm, when they come and pray in this house, then hear from the heavens your dwelling place and do according to all which the foreigner calls to you for, 
so that all the people of the earth know your name and fear you, as do your people Israel, and to know that this house which I have built is called by your name. Every last temple, every last tent, every last tabernacle bears the name of Yahweh. Who have you dedicated your temple to? Who, what names do you have nailed over the, the, the uh, front gate out front? Okay. Is it dedicated to Yahweh? Have you felt this fire? We must use the pattern to feel the presence that is spoken of in this word. Israelite, foreigner alike, sojourners, does not matter what color you are, what country you're from, these scriptures teach that it is the same pattern for all mankind. I don't care if you're from another universe. This is biblical teaching. This is the pattern that we must use. According to scripture, not theology. Hallelujah. Okay? Now, that candle that we were talking about, Let's go to uh, Psalms, real quick, chapter 18 and at verse 28. I'll read it out of the word of Yahweh. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for your word. Blessed be your name, O King. Okay, Psalms, chapter 18 and at verse 28. Now, remember, there was I was saying that... that um, we're trying to rekindle that life that Yahweh had put in Adam in the beginning. Okay? Now watch this. King David makes this statement. He recognizes that there is darkness within man. Okay? Watch what he says. Psalms chapter 18 and at verse 28. For thou will light my candle. See this? Yahweh, my Elohim, will enlighten my darkness. You understand what he's saying here? Man is living in darkness. There's something that used to burn inside of him that was put out. And he said, only Yahweh. Yahweh, my king, my deliverer. He will come into me and relight that which was put out, which is the light. Hallelujah. Yahshua is the light of the world. This goes right in line. When we move him into our tent, the light begins to shine. Where? On the word, on the Torah, that is that has been moved into your temple as well. That's what the purpose of the menorah was. To shine light in this place. Where we go to meet with Yahweh. And that light shined on the word, the Torah. It's the same pattern. He said, O oh, Yahweh, you lighteth my candle. You give me that life that was lost. No longer have to walk in darkness. Yahshua is coming, our deliverer. Okay. Moving on. Now, we see this pattern handed down through the centuries here. We've seen it given at Mount Sinai, and then we see right here in chapter 5, verse 10 in Chronic, Second Chronicles, there was not in the ark but the two tablets which Mose put there at Horeb. Okay? This is what was given to them as a pattern at that mount, still being handed down through the generations. Okay? Now what we're going to do to end this teaching is we're going to, to go and, and present biblical truth in the New Testament, the Brit Hadashah, okay, the Messianic Scriptures, <laughs> that this pattern was the same exact pattern that was supposed to be used to those who follow and accept Yahshua as the Messiah. It's the same pattern. There is no other pattern. Okay, the first century assembly still used this pattern. The Torah 
was present. Yahshua was present. Yahshua brought the blood sacrifices, the blood sacrifice that was needed. He presented that as the one who was also there, the high priest. The priest was there. Okay, he is the high priest that presented that. He's the manna that we've studied about in the Omer uh, a few uh, Shabbats ago. He's the bread of life that would always be before the Father. It's the same pattern, same teachings. Let's go to the book of Hebrews. We're going to begin in chapter 6. Okay, we're going to read verses uh, 10 through 13. Now remember everything that we just learned. All the way from the mountain and Moshe, all the way down through King David's times and into Solomon's time, the dedication of the temple, everything being moved in that was given, uh, which was originally, excuse me, given at Mount Sinai, okay, Mount Horeb, to Moshe. We see that all of those things went into the uh, temple that Solomon had prepared. Okay, and now we're going to see biblical testimony in the Messianic scriptures that say this is the same pattern and the same things that are supposed to be moved into our temple. Because now, yeah, the, 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 the New Testament teaches us that there is a temple, but it's one not made with hands. Okay? We, Shaul says, are the temple of the living Elohim. You must present your temple. I must present my temple with the pattern that was handed down from Moses. Okay? In order to have the presence of the true Elohim, the only mighty one, the true Elohim, Yahweh. For his spirit to dwell in us. And his son, the lamb, skin dyed red, from the original tent, moved into the new place that we have prepared, along with the Ark of the Covenant. What was in the Ark of the Covenant? The tablets, the commandments. Hallelujah. This has Torah and Messiah connected all throughout this time. You cannot separate the two. If you do, you're taking a huge part of the pattern out of your life. You will never be able to get the puzzle to fit together. Okay. Uh, Hebrews chap Ebram, chapter uh, 6, beginning at verse 10, and we're going to read through 13. Now remember, we started this off uh, uh, not only with the pattern, but we see uh, Teruma, okay, the offerings from the heart out of love. Remember, now remember that as we begin to read this. Okay, you tell me what the writer of the book of Hebrews is expressing. It's the same thing that that's the only thing that they knew. It's the only pattern that they ever used. Watch this, beginning at verse ten. For Elohim is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. Your offerings, your work and your labor. Remember, they, they were taking up a contribution, a contribution in order from the people, and it had to come from their heart. What are you willing to give to build this house? What are you willing to give? What am I willing to give up to build this place for him to dwell in? Without this pattern, we can't make it. And we have these lion teachers tell us that we can, we can, we can create a dwelling place for him in all of these different manners, but none of them are rooted and grounded and have anything to do with the pattern that has been handed down by the Hebrew people generation after generation after generation. Your work and labor of love, your offerings, your sacrifices, your truma. Which you have shown towards his what? His name. What did Solomon say? He prepared a house for what? His name. His great name. These teachings haven't changed. 
Blessed be your name, Yahweh. You have shown toward his name in that you have attended to the set apart ones and still attend. What was Moses doing? He was attending to the people of Yahweh, Israel. See, these things haven't changed. Verse 11. And we desire that each one of you show the same eagerness. This is what we're supposed to do is encourage one another to show the same eagerness to create your dwelling place for Yahweh in the same pattern that was used handed down over these generations. To the entire confirmation of expectation until the end. It's supposed to be that way forever. In order that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through belief and patience inherit the promises. To imitate. What does that mean? That you use the same pattern that you're viewing from these other people. <laughs> Hallelujah. Use the same pattern. Imitate them. And, and Shaul gave us the same concept. He said, imitate me as I imitate Yahshua. Why? Because Yahshua walked in the pattern. That's the pattern I want to set up. I want the Spirit of Yahweh to dwell in my tent. I want His Spirit to dwell in your tent. We must use this pattern. But imitate those who through belief and patience inherit the promises. So here we see that following this pattern, to imitate that pattern that was given at the mount, it, this is, remember earlier I was saying that it's connected to the promises that were given through Abraham. This, this, this is biblical testimony of that in the New Testament. But imitate those who through belief and patience inherit the promises. Use the pattern if you want to inherit the promises. For Elohim, having promised Abraham, see there, since he could swear by no one greater, swore by my by himself. Yahweh could not swear by any other name greater than his own name. So the house and the promises, the house was built for his name. The promises and the covenants were sealed in his name. Everything, your house and the covenant that we make with him, is supposed to be in his name through Yahshua. It's the same pattern. I pray that you can see this. I pray that you're reading along and that Yahweh is revealing things to you. Okay, now let's let's go over uh, verses 17 through 20. This is the pattern, people. <laughs> this is the pattern. In this way, what way? Yahweh's way. Yahweh's way, in Yahweh's way, he gave us a pattern to do things in. Why? Because it leads to everlasting life in his son, Yahshua. Okay? It's going to do something to your tent. <laughs> that tent that he used to never could dwell in. Okay? Now he can if you follow the pattern. He made a way to bring light into our dark world. To give us life once again. Receive that. In this way, Elohim, resolving to show even more clearly to the heirs of promise the unchangeableness of his purpose, confirmed it by an oath. What oath? The covenant that was made. In whose name? In his name. The house was built in the covenant. In whose name? Yahweh's name. What what pattern did they use? The pattern that's always existed. Same, same exact one. And what... Is that pattern unchangeableness of his purpose? The purpose of that pattern for the tent of meeting is unchangeable. Verse 18, so that by two unchangeable matters in which it is impossible for Elohim to lie. If you are a teacher, and you are teaching people to use a different pattern 
than that which was handed down and confirmed in the name of Yahweh in covenant in the name of Yahweh to build the house of Yahweh. If you are a teacher and you are teaching people that they can use a different pattern, you are a false prophet. You are leading people, you are leading the sheep in the wrong direction. You are leading the, the flock of Yahweh astray. You understand? You are not using this pattern. Therefore, you are leading sheep in the wrong direction. You're going the wrong way. You are not leading them to the house of Yahweh. This is unchangeable. And you're making Yahweh a liar, or making him look to be as a liar, when you say that the foreigners that were spoken about in, 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 uh, by Solomon, okay, being, and that being a house of prayer for his name for all peoples, that they would be drawn to that house and to that great name. If you're not using that pattern for these foreigners, for the sojourners, if you're not using that pattern and you're teaching a different pattern, you are a false teacher. This pattern is very important for us to share with one another in the body of Yeshua. This is how we get there, folks. This is how we get there. This is how we receive Yahweh's Spirit. Properly preparing and dedicating our temple to Him. It's the only way. It's the pattern that He made in order to show us how to get Him into our temple. It's impossible for Him to lie. This is true. This pattern is the real deal. Blessed be his name. We might have strong encouragement, and this is what is supposed to encourage us. We who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the expectation set before us. See that we flee from what? Death. Darkness. We lay hold of the truth of Yahweh. Purge the evil and wickedness and sin from our bodies. Invite Yahshua inside with us, and he, the Son, will move everything that was ordained by the Father, the commandments, the Ark of the Covenant, the mercy seat, and everything comes with him into your temple. Providing the blood in order that we can receive the grace and mercy spoken about in the Torah. Verse 19. This and this he, he tells us what this pattern produces. Hallelujah which we have as an anchor of the life. This pattern is the anchor of everlasting life that was promised to those uh, who believed in Yahweh and worshipped him and to the seed of Abraham, the father of faith. There is no other pattern. It is the anchor of the life, both safe and firm. These things are true. Okay, Firmly believe and understand in these teachings about the pattern. Okay, It is the anchor for life. And here we're going to see it connected to what? And entering into that within the veil. What will we... Uh, what, what were we receiving by the uh, uh, opening Torah portions? How they were supposed to set up the, the tent of meeting, okay, and the veils and everything else. This is exactly the same pattern used by Yahweh's people. Who do you wish to worship? Who do you want dwelling inside of you? This is why I call upon Yahweh and I move his son into my heart and allow him to place the commandments and the Ark of the Covenant and everything else in my heart because I want this life that is promised to me. I want to serve the mighty one of Israel because he is the one that not only gave us the pattern 
but he is the one that will give us eternal life. And he loves us. And I want to serve him. And I want you to serve him. We must use this pattern. Baruch Hashem. Thank you for your Torah. I love him. He loves you. He gave us this pattern so that he could show us his love. All he asks is that we love him back. And that we keep him and only him as a mighty one before his face. That's it. Have no other mighty ones before my face. He loves us. We need to use this pattern. We need to give him a place to dwell. Hallelujah. Invite him in. You must have these commandments. Watch. Now, we're not done. Hallelujah. Verse 20. Where Yahshua has entered as a forerunner. Remember what, I, what we were teaching? What I was teaching you just a while ago? That they moved the old tent of meeting into the new tent? See this? Okay, Yahshua, that tent, repre that tent represented Yahshua. See this? Where Yahshua has entered as a forerunner. He comes in. He's a forerunner. He goes into Yahweh's place. The holy place. A forerunner before us. To stand as a mediator there. In order that we can obtain mercy. The blood being produced. Hallelujah. Where in the veil? Behind the veil. Behind the veil, this tent, behind it, in your inner man, that's where he will meet with us. We're going to go to uh, chapter 8 and read a couple of more sets of verses just to put the icing on the cake here, okay, and prove that this pattern was being used to teach the people in the assemblies in the first century. We followed this pattern from Mount Horeb to Solomon's Temple. And now we're seeing it here in the book of Hebrews in the first century. It is the pattern. We're going to read verses 1 and 2 in Hebrews chapter 8. Listen to what the writer says. Hallelujah. Now, the summary of what we are saying is this. This is the summary of this whole teaching. <laughs> Praise your name, Yahweh. We have such a high priest, Joshua, who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the greatness in the heavens and who serves in the set-apart place and of the true tent which Yahweh set up. And not man. That which was set up by the pattern given at the mountain is a shadow of exactly what Yahweh has built in the heavens. That pattern was given to us by Yahweh from heaven. Anybody teaching against that pattern as being the way that you prepare your temple, okay, is speaking against the words of the Almighty, the one that created all living things. And and you, if you are doing that, you are teaching falsehood. And you are going to fall into the judgment of Yahweh's wrath for leading his sheep astray. Believe that. We need to get in line with, with, with the Torah here. We need to present the New Testament teachings, okay, not from theology courses, but from the Torah, which is the dictionary, okay, the Old Testament or the Tanakh is the dictionary of the New Testament. Not 2,000 years of Roman and Greek theology stacked on top of the truth. This is the pattern. Hallelujah. And that pattern is given to us as a shadow of 
of what is going on up there. This is what is going to be happening in the kingdom reign. This is what the tent that we're, okay, that's what the Feast of Tabernacles is all about. And we already been over that tonight. Okay? It's to dwell in this booth, this tent, this place, this temple. Okay? Now let's go to verses 4 through 10. Here we're going to see the same exact diagrams of that pattern. In the New Testament, handed down generation after generation after generation after generation. And this is the pattern that I, Teddy Wilson, am presenting to you, the people who view this. And I'm saying that we must according to the word of the one that I serve, use this pattern in order for his presence to dwell in us. Verse 4. For if indeed he were on earth, he would not be a priest, since there are priests who offer the gifts according to the Torah. What? We're talking about the offerings and the things that were given by the priests Okay, in the Torah, and this is a New Testament teaching. <laughs> and it's speaking about Yahshua being up there in the heavens, making the taking uh, uh, the, the position of a priest. There's still a sacrificial system. Why? Because it is the Torah. <coughs> Excuse me. Yahweh's commandments are eternal. They weren't just for a certain period of time and for a certain group of people. They are eternal. Bless his name. Verse 5. Who serve a copy and a shadow of the heavenly. This is telling us that Yahshua is still fulfilling in the true tent that which was given to us in the pattern on this earth. <laughs> Hallelujah. As Moshe, and then it, there it is. It's making the connection for us right there. It's the same pattern that was given to Moses. As Moshe was warned when he was about to make the tent. He, this teaching has to do with the preparation of your tent in the body of Yahshua. I pray that you understand this. Hallelujah. For he said, see that you make, now remember what we started out with? They are teaching the same Torah precepts right here. See that you make all according to the pattern shown to you on the mountain. How does that theology that they taught us in seminary school sound now? Huh? When I was in church sanity, I was deceiving people. I am man enough to stand up now and say to all of you people that knew me when I was in the Pentecostal movement, I lied to you. And I apologize. I'm sorry. Okay? Have mercy on me, Father. But according to the wisdom and knowledge that he has given me now, I'm, I pray that all of you people that ever met me when I was a Pentecostal uh, minister, I pray that you see me now so that I can tell you to repent and be baptized in the name of Yahshua for the remission of your sins. Receive his spirit, which will lead you to the Torah and will direct you into this pattern in order that the presence of the almighty Yahweh can dwell in you. Hallelujah. See that you make all according to the pattern that was shown to you on the mountain. Same exact teachings. So, I also want to you know, shed some light on something. This is telling us that this lines up with the Torah principles. So, if your teachings in theology, in churchanity, okay, if somehow your teachings using other verses in between 
Matthew and here contradict this pattern and you're using the word to produce a different pattern, you are misinterpreting these scriptures. And you're teaching people falsehood using the word because you're making it contradict this pattern. Verse 6. But now he has obtained a more excellent service inasmuch as he is also the mediator of a better covenant which was constituted on better promises. So here we see that it, it has the same principles of the covenant, but what made it of, of the original covenant, but what made it better? There's no more blood of bulls and goats and sheep. See, now the promises are secure because Yahshua gave the blood sacrifice himself. That's why it's better promises. Not that they're different, but they are more secure. Verse 7. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. Now, just so that people don't think that what most of church entity is teaching is that the old covenant was for the Jews and Israelites, okay, and the new covenant was for uh, the church, okay, that's not what this is talking about. If you go into verse uh, chapter 9 and begin to read, it's talking about the priesthood, the changing of the priesthood, okay? It's not, it's not talking about the promises were better but given to a different group of people. We're going to see, we're going to see that at, at the end of these uh, verses that we're reading here. Okay? Verse 8, for finding fault with them. See, it wasn't a fault in the covenant that was made or the commandments in the covenant. There was fault found with the people in the covenant. We brought fault to that covenant. Yahweh does not change, and all of the promises are unchangeable, and so the pattern was unchangeable. It's what we just seen, and this verse tells us that it had nothing to do with the rules in the covenant or anything that had been coveted in Yahweh's name. There was fault found with the people in the covenant. We broke covenant. Broke his commandments. So now, the reestablished covenant is a better covenant because now, Yahshua has died the death that we would have died and he has shed the blood that covers us, of our, uh, uh, covers our sins in the eyes of Yahweh. That's why it's a better covenant. It's reestablished. For finding fault with them, he says, See, the days are coming, said Yahweh, when I shall conclude with the house of Israel and with the house of Yehuda, a renewed covenant. Verse 9, Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Mitzrayim, because they did not continue in my covenant. You see this? That's the reason why it's not the, uh, the same covenant, is because we broke that covenant. Now he's pulling us back into covenant with him in the body of Yahshua. Household rules, same covenant still exists. It's reestablished on better foundation, better promises. Why? Because it's 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 founded on on the blood of Yahshua. His blood has done it. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Mitzrayim, because they did not continue in my covenant, and I disregarded them. He divorced them, okay, saith Yahweh. Now listen to verse 10. Because this is the covenant. Now this, he's, he's speaking about a prophecy that was made in between the time that we read about in, in uh, the preparation of Solomon's, the dedication of Solomon's temple, okay, and the prophecies of Jeremiah. This is what was said through the prophet Jeremiah. Yahweh does not change. Watch what he says. Because this is a covenant that I shall make with the house of Israel after those days, says who? Yahweh. Okay?
Remember what they moved into the temple? The Ark of the Covenant. What was in the Ark of the Covenant? The commandments. Who moved it in there? The priests. All of the utensils had been ordained by the Father. Sacrifices. And what happened? The presence of the Almighty came. Listen to this. Listen to this. If you think that in the New Covenant you are freed from the commandments of Yahweh and that you can only move in His Son into your heart without the... You can't... Yahshua is the Word. And in the Word there is commandments. Okay? You will never get Yahshua without the commandments. He was the Torah. He was the living word of Elohim. He was the word become flesh in the book of John. He is the word. You will never receive Yahshua Messiah, the true Messiah, the true Savior of all mankind, without the laws. He is the Torah. <laughs> it is impossible to separate the two. Now listen, this is a prophecy of Jeremiah. And this prophecy was made to the children of Israel and Judah in the 31st chapter of uh, Jeremiah, I believe. Okay? I think it's 3131. We'll end with these last few verses. Chapter 31 in Jeremiah. This is a prophecy, okay, about the new covenant. Verse 31 in chapter 31. See, the days are coming, declares Yahweh, when I shall make a new covenant with who? The house of Israel. This is who the new covenant was, was made for. The house of Israel and the house of Yehuda. Not like the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Mitzrayim. And see, that is not a New Testament teaching doing away with the commandments. Okay, th it was a prophecy being quoted by the writer of the book of Hebrews. Okay? My covenant which they broke, though I was a husband to them, declares Yahweh. For this is the covenant I shall make with the, with the house of Israel after those days, declares Yahweh. I shall put my Torah in their heart, in their inward parts, and write it on their hearts, and I shall be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. This is why Solomon was saying, okay, in all of the covenants, all of the covenants are made to Israel and Judah. Nobody else. There is no, no, the new covenant was not for the Gentiles. Nowhere in the Bible does it ever say that. Okay, this new covenant was made to the people who broke covenant in the original uh, covenant. It was made at Mount Sinai. But he used the same pattern that was shown at Mount Sinai in order to regather and pull everybody back in and so that his presence could be in them. He used the same pattern. There is no other pattern. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, so here we see it in prophecy. Now, Yahshua, by the time we get to the book of Hebrews, what we just read, Yahshua had already fulfilled it, and that's why it is a better covenant, because now the blood has been supplied. You see this? Because this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said Yahweh, giving my laws in their mind, and I shall write them on their hearts, and I shall be their Elohim, and they should be my people. According to the prophecy and according to the writer in the New Testament of the book of Hebrews, the laws and commandments are part of the covenant. They were part of the pattern that was shown to us in Mount Horeb, Sinai. They were the same exact laws and covenant that they moved into the temple at the dedication of Solomon's temple. And according to the book of Hebrews and the prophecy of Jeremiah, it is the same set of laws, the same utensils and everything that we must move along with Yahshua into our tent, into our temple. There is no other pattern. Hallelujah. 
That's it. There is no other patterns. There is no other way to prepare your temple in order that Yahweh can come in there and meet with you in that holy place. So you must make it holy first. Cleanse it. Move what Yahweh has ordained in there before his presence can meet with you there. Hallelujah. I hope everybody's enjoyed the teachings. And uh, once again, I thank everybody uh, all over the world who are uh, tuning in to, to view the teachings. And uh, I thank you for all the feedback. I thank you guys for uh, for listening. Most of all, I thank Yahweh for uh, making this possible. And uh, before we close out, uh, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you and we thank you. We say Shabbat Shalom, Abba. We just ask that uh, you would make this Sabbath a joy to us, Father. That you would look down from the Shemaim and look upon us, your servants, and count us as your children. Place your laws, your commandments, the spirit of your Son in our hearts. Show us the pattern. Help us to live by it. We love you and we praise you, Abba. Baruch Abba Bashem Yahweh. Blessed is he who comes in the name of Yahweh. We thank you so much, Father, for your word, for the blood that was shed, and for your favor and your grace and your mercy that you have shown on us, Father, in your son, Yahshua. Thank you.